If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe by pressing this button below. You'll be the first to be informed of any posting that I make. Shalom. Thank goodbye. Thank you for this opportunity once again. It's always a privilege you know, and an honor to be invited. So I really thank God for thinking of me. And uh, it's my pleasure to be with all of you today. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you again. Thank you for this, this Sabbath um, marketplace fellowship that uh, uh, Elder Jehu and Sister Christine has been helming all these years. And I thank you. Thank you also for all those who have come in to participate together. And Lord, together we are in one accord. So Father, I just pray that even today, as I share as I come to share your word and the work that you do in my life. Father, as Paul has said, death in me, that I may impart your life to hearers. So Father, I thank you. So bless this fellowship, the Sabbat marketplace, and everybody who comes every Saturday faithfully, and your presence is with us. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Have it your way. Minister to each of us in your own Amen. special way. I thank you, praise you, give you all the glory in Jesus' name. All God's people must say, Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, uh, really, uh, Elder Jehovah and Sister Christine. You know, I must declare the previous week, the previous week that I was invited to speak, uh, I was so caught up with so much work, I was so busy that uh, I actually turned down the Monday fellowship, I turned down Thursday fellowship, I other people to speak for me, and the Friday Esther ministry was also not on, so and actually, I actually quote-unquote regretted I said, Lord, why did I was so quick that day to say yes to Elder Jehu and Sister Christine, but uh, interestingly, by midweek, when I actually cancelled the, uh, the, 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 my regular speaking, you know, I felt so dry in my spirit. The separation from God, because I was so caught up with worldliness, that I actually suddenly realized, Lord, I've got a Saturday Sabbath marketplace. I can come back to you. So I went back to the Lord and I tell you, I was watered again, okay? I was no more dry. So I want to thank you. So the next week when uh, Sister Christine, you say, look, Sister Simon, can you take this? I, I was very quick again to say, very busy this week. <laughs> and then that night I got convicted. You mean your busyness is going to take you away from me again? I said, okay, okay, <laughs> Lord, Lord, Lord. I repent. So I, I said, look, just give me one or two days to wait on the Lord for a message. I dare not, okay? I, I really need to pick God first. And no matter how Hallelujah. busy I am, I realize that in my busyness, uh, in the worldly busyness, and when we put Sunday service or put God aside, uh, we get very dry in the spirit. And I didn't like that feeling at all, you know. There was a kind of a separation from God. And very dry and I didn't like it. So, Father, I just thank you once again for making me I see. I will not, not ever put worldly busyness before you. So, I thank you, Lord. So, Father, I just thank you again today in the name of Jesus that, Lord, uh, you know, we're going to talk about the inner, the inner being that, you know, in Matthew 23, 26. So, Brother Colin, I need you once again. By God's grace, you flow with me, okay? Matthew 23, uh, 26, the Lord says, you know, in Matthew 20, it, that is that verse, but actually all the way from Matthew 22 onwards already, the Lord was criticizing the Pharisees that look good on the outside, but not right on the inside, which we got to be very careful about. Okay, so uh, Matthew 23, 26, uh, uh, he says that, you know, um, 20, uh, 23, he says, war to you, scribes, and in 25, you clean the outside of the cup, of the cup, but inside you're full of robbery and self-indulgence. And even call you, you blind Pharisee, you know, clean the inside of the cup. First, that's the key. The word is first. 
Um, Sorry, 23, 26. 23, 20. Actually, I'm reading 23, 25, 26. But 26 says, first clean the inside of a cup of the dish and the dish so that the outside may become clean. So what God wants us, the key word is first. You know? So there's this first. And the other first, of course, is Matthew 6, 33. You know? So here it says, don't be a whitewashed too soon. If you go on... Uh, Go on to 26, 27, 27. You are like whitewashed tombstones on the outside, beautiful, but inside full of dead men bones and unclean. And 28 is very critical. Huh? When Jesus told the Pharisees, you appear outwardly righteous, you know, but inwardly you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Now, this is where we must, get our insight right. The fulfillment of the insight is very important. And I will attest to that before I was a Christian, you know, I I um, was driven. I'm very ambitious, okay? I'm driven to be successful. I wanted the university degree, make sure that the husband I have has, has got a good education degree, and then it doesn't matter that he is rich or poor. It doesn't matter. In fact, my mother said, don't marry a rich man. <laughs> you will marry a rich man. You will not only marry him. You marry the father, the mother, the uncle, the brother, the sister, and everybody in the family. That is, I mean, my mother is telling me from her own experience. When you marry a rich man's son, you don't have him. You have the whole family. And then you're under their kind of, a, you know, a control, so to speak, you know. So anyway, that's a very good advice for my mom. So when I met my husband, he fitted the bill, okay? He was potential first class going on to, to uh, uh, Yale University scholarship. Plus on top of that, he came from not a rich family, but a scholarship boy and, and very industrious. So, and talked that he was tall and frankly good looking to me. Lah. So he fitted the bill. Amen, you know? So I, I want to thank God for that. And then... Notwithstanding that both of us, you know, had good career, I think I mentioned this in my previous talk, that at the end of the day, it's not the outward, it's not the outward successes, worldly successes. Because, you see, men, I realize, men, we are created by God in the image of God. And don't say why God looks like men. Actually, we are in the image of God. We look like God. So, actually, we look like God and that is how God looks like, Okay. So in heaven, you find Jesus and God and all of us will really look like, quote unquote, we call it human beings, but actually we are God beings. We are created by God, our creator in the image of God and not by the world in the image of the world. So men will find fulfillment only in the way of God, in the will of God and according to the word of God. This is what I found out. But before I was a Christian, uh, unknown to me, I was chasing after success. Uh, given my ambition, and then of course my husband being what he is, he was very successful. He was in Citibank, he led and he became head of operation, head of treasury, head hunter, went to OCBC, D, uh, DGM in OCBC, then after that head hunter and became head of a uh, Arab bank. And for me, by the grace of God, um, I was, at that time, I, I won't call myself civil servant now, Quite not that civil, but actually a public servant and uh, successful in my own way. We had everything one, but the fulfillment there was no, 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 the outward trappings uh, was not uh, satisfied, did not fulfill this spiritual need inside each one of us that we have. Okay. So uh, this is why the success in the world's terms will never give us that fulfillment. Rather, Worldly success will bring only a uh, lustful desires that is insatiable. You know? And uh, I want to thank God. You know, fulfillment and possessions of this world don't correlate. And uh, you know, when you have the peace of God, uh, when you have the joy of the Lord, when you have the love of God in us, you don't need very much in this world. So I found out. Since walking 40 years with the Lord, 
I want to believe that I need less and less things. Uh, the more important is having Christ in me. And things of the world go strangely dim. This is something which I've experienced for myself. And it comes from the Lord, uh, uh, building an inner man inside me. In First Peter chapter 3, verse 4, that says, it's the hidden person, it's the, it's the, the, the person, the hidden person of the heart, you know, that is precious, reverent, quiet, gentle, that is precious in the sight of God. But that took, that took time. It really took time. And uh, praise God, we are the, the workmanship of God. Throughout our whole life, uh, our ambition now must change. My ambition changed. I told the Lord, the Lord changed my worldly ambition to an ambition to be ambitious for spiritual maturity rather than to be ambitious to be successful in this world. On the other hand, the beautiful thing is when you have Christ in you, you will grow in both in stature and wisdom, having favor with God and with men. So that becomes the fruit of, you know, our going after God. And this is now after 40 years, I want to share that I am very blessed. I'm very blessed that, as I said previously, I like myself better now, having more of Christ in me. And that's why the Lord says, you know, love God with all your heart, your soul, mind, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, this self that I love is no longer I who live the old Ibun, the Ibun that has got her old personality that is dominating, that is self-centered, that is self-serving, okay? Full of uh, self-driven, uh, uh, a very self-driven uh, personality that is of my own personality, my own righteousness, which is filthy rags before God. But after 40 years walking with the Lord, and the Lord taught me walking with Him is to deny self, carry the cross and follow Him. And that has been the um, call in my life, which I shared with us before, that we are called and we must be chosen and we are chosen to bear the fruit of the Spirit according to John 15, 16. And those who are chosen as in Revelation 17, 14, remain faithful. So it is uh, in the faithfulness, it is found when you face various trials. And yet, I want to thank God, you know, in the spiritual maturity, when we come to Christ, we must desire for spiritual maturity. And one of my desire, I pray, is your desire too, uh, is that the last will be the best. Amen. So in John 2, 11, I had read in the Bible that Jesus at the wedding in Cana, he served because the, uh, the the owner ran out of wine, you all know that story, right? And Jesus, of course, got the, the jars of water and turned it into wine. When God touches the God of the vineyard, when it's in the master's hand, amen, God can only give us nothing but only the best. So, of course, he gave the best. And then the wine master tasted it and said, oh my goodness, you know, the, told the owner, of course, he didn't know where the wine came from, except the owner and, you know, the person who actually uh, 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 sold the wine. And he is actually doubting Thomas. He became Thomas, uh, became a disciple of Jesus because he saw the miracle in Jesus Christ. And uh, he said, you know, normally at a wedding, you will serve the good wine first. And after they have drunk and they are half drunk, they don't know what they're drinking, they will take out the not so good wine. But you, in your case, you serve the best wine last. It takes a different status. It takes a different elegance. It takes a different, uh, you know, uh, uh, a class to serve the best at the last, especially when. And when I read that, I put up my hand and said, Lord, I want to be the best wine at the end of my life, you know, I, I want, it's not how we begin, it's how we end. So spiritual maturity is so important when you're born again in Christ and you must grow as in 2 Corinthians chapter 
three, it says you grow from faith to faith as from glory to glory. And you look full in the face of Jesus Christ. You grow into the likeness of whom you look and whom you worship. And I want to thank God that you and I, we worship the Lord. And, you know, uh, as I said before, I, I, I repeat this purely because it's so real and I want to share this with you. It's not only for me, it's for all of you too. That during the uh, charismatic move and there were prophecies in church, the Lord says, if you want to find me, you'll come to my word, you'll find me there. And I realized the word of God and God, inseparable. Okay? God says in Jeremiah 1.12, I watch over my word to perform that. And Jesus is the word. John 1 says, in the beginning is word, the word is God, and the word became God, became flesh. However, also in John 1, he says that the law came through Moses, but truth and grace and grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. You know, uh, 17, 117, law was given through Moses, but grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. And of course, you know, when Christ died, he died as us. That's the key, being born again. We are born again. We got a new spirit. Therefore, we too must renew our mind, our spirit. Our, mind, our spirit is born again. So the soul must be renewed. The mind, the will, and the emotions. Okay, these three parts of the soul. The, the mind, the will, the emotions. Uh, as in Thessalonians chapter 5. And this is God who's going to do it. And he who he is faithful and he do it to us. And this is the spiritual maturity that is from inside out. And this is where we clean out. And I want to thank God. I want to, the last time when I shared, I talked about how God has actually been with me throughout. But I want to say, today I really want to share about, uh, you know, um, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. Clean out your, the inside out. And Again, as I say, I'm very blessed because I wear my sins on my sleeves. You know? All my nonsense, I am so transparent that I actually can see actually my mistakes. People can see, people can tell me, okay? Now, very interesting. I also want to share how God will talk to me. Now, God talks to us through dreams, through visions, through words, through prophecies, okay? And that is how God leads and guides us. We are the workmanship of God, eh? Ephesians. 220. We are the workmanship of God, created in Christ Jesus, even before the foundation of the world. And we are to follow him. And uh, so we are in Christ Jesus. You are born again. That's the most important thing, uh, is to know our identity. I've been called, and because I'm called, I know I have a stewardship. The stewardship is to walk and to experience the Lord and to share. And the Lord wants me to share week by week. And he gave me the Monday Fellowship, Thursday Fellowship, to share what he has done for me during the week. And in May, May the 1st, 1984, I remember because Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship, in those days, uh, under uh, Papa Ku, uh, every 1st of May, they will have a big conference, 1st May, 1st and 2nd. They will hold it at Mandarin, uh, orchard and I remember you know I wanted to go and the Lord said you don't go uh, you already know enough knowledge puffed up but love edifies and the Lord says you don't go I need you to put into practice what you already learned from me don't keep on gathering knowledge so since then uh, by the grace of God the Lord wants me to walk his word and one of the ways to walk my word was that day was to teach my daughter without getting angry is to you know bear fruit of the spirit so the lord said you know i told you to bear fruit you bear fruit of the spirit so that was how i had to put into practice and i recall i have to that day die to myself in teaching my daughter tutoring her and uh, actually, Hock Chai, my husband, called me and said, look, everybody's being baptized in the spirit. Better come, you know. Uh, Ralph, Ralph Nider, something, one of the speakers. But I said, no, the Lord said I cannot go. God will baptize me another time. Then the Lord sent me a word through a sister, Li Hua of St. James Church. And she came and said, you know, the Lord says, 
the word of God for you is know what love is because without love, you're a noisy gong and cymbal. Then the Lord also said a word to me that if you love me, you obey my commandments. That was John 14. And if you obey my commandments, me and my father will come and suck in you. So that to me were my, you know, Rima word and in the start of my walk with the Lord. Now, I want to tell you during that year too, I had a dream. Now, what I'm saying is God leads and guides us and teach us. We are his workmanship. He doesn't leave us alone. God do not bring us into his kingdom, baptize us in the Holy Spirit, let us receive Jesus. No one come to Christ except when he calls us. So when you respond to God's call, after that, frankly, God doesn't leave you alone. If only you will agree to be yielded vessel. If you agree to say, Lord, you lead me and guide me. Lord, I want to follow you. I will let you lead me. I will read your word. Even if I don't understand, I'll read. Holy Spirit, you are the author of the word. You teach me, okay? If I don't understand, it doesn't matter. Be a yielded vessel and Lord, lead you and guide you. And interesting, that's what I did because I came to a point, I gave up totally on myself at 36 years old. I didn't know what to do. My husband wanted to walk out of me. I gave up on the world because good friends, professional people were giving me all kinds of solutions which were, now I look at it, utterly rubbish from the world's point of view. I tell you, it was literally rubbish that I caught and caught. I gave up on men and the world. Men as human beings advice and I really needed the truth and that's when I went looking I went I went Zen I went uh you know uh, Zai you went I went all knocking at every spiritual door all I was looking for is truth I want the truth I don't know what's the meaning of life I want to meet the true God I went to my own temple my own temple the idol was quiet dead couldn't answer me and I was so desperate that God came and caught me himself and dream. He gave me dreams. God, now dreams are very powerful. Uh, he gave me dreams. And the dream that I had was um, three dreams. Uh, at that time, you're now so desperate to look for God. That's how God, so good, you know, just keep on trusting God. God who called you will will and work for his own good pleasure. Just remember, God will not leave you alone. And I'll tell you, boy, see, guy, no matter what situation you're in, look, boy, see, guy, you cannot die one because God is with you. The Holy Spirit is in you. He will never leave you, never forsake you. He's your comforter. He's your teacher. He's a spirit and he's better than Google search. He will search God's mind and the depth of God to show you everything about God. If you will just say, Holy Spirit, teach me, guide me. That's all you need to say. You must come, come one, you must come yen. Be yielded to be led by the Lord and not by the world. So because you are actually dead, you know, in Christ, you're dead. It's no longer you who live, but Christ who live in you. The life you now live in the flesh, you live uh, unto God, not unto man, not unto the world. Okay? And then let your mind no more be conformed to the world, but be renewed according to the will of God. Okay? So this is very basic and it's, to me, very simple. If we will not fight the word of God. And I also realized that the fight that we have, the great fight that you have, is not with the devil. Okay, the devil is a defeated foe. The greatest fight is in your mind to choose to walk according to the word of God and fight off neg negativity, 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 yeah, negative. Fight off doubts. Fight off unbelief. Fight off, you know, uh, uh, anything that goes against the word of God. Anything you hear, please go check up the word of God. The Holy Spirit lead me. What he or she say true or not. Look, I stand before the Lord even sharing with you that every word that I speak, I pray, that I think, I talk, I speak, I do let it be by the grace of God in alignment with your word, the plumb line. And if not, the Lord promised me in Philippians, uh, I'll show you, the Lord promised us, this is the word of God. Now, when you have the fear of God, you will know that the word of God will, is the truth. And the fear of God is to believe every word that God speaks. The warning, the blessings, they, okay? He says here in Philippians 
chapter 3, verse 15. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. Perfect means as you are growing to maturity. As you grow, perfect is maturity, okay? And I'll come and define scripture, what is the meaning of perfect. The meaning of perfect in Matthew chapter 5 is love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor, bless your enemy, bless them who curse you. This is perfection. You know? That perfection is not a knowledge perfection. It's a character of God that we can say, I forgive you for you know not what you're doing. And I, 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 I bless you even though you have done me all the wrongs that you do. That's perfection in the law. Therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. If anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal also that to you. So I told God, okay, huh? I do anything wrong, you must show me. Holy Spirit, don't be too gentle with me. Sometimes I'm a bit stubborn. Give me one big kick, okay? Don't be too gentle. Sometimes I'm a bit stubborn. And thank God, God is good. God sometimes shouts at me, although God is a gentle God, okay? He talks softly. However, He will give our conviction. Now, I've gone down a rabbit trail. I was sharing something else. I've gone down a rabbit trail. Those of you who are listening to me, I left off the main road to go down a side road. Do you all know where I left off? I was sharing something with you all and I went, I shall written down and I went down a rabbit trail. Oh, dreams. So I had a dream. The dream uh, in that year when I was searching for the truth, I had this dream. I was so intense. You know, I'm a very intense person and desperate. And I was intense. I was just looking uh, around, looking around different religions. I had a dream. In the dream, uh, I was in a boat and all of a sudden, as I was in the boat, there was a whole group of demons, all different colors driven in front of me. And uh, at that moment, at that time, I was worshipping the idol at Waterloo Street. So I was about to call out to the idol. The idol appeared on the, in, the, uh, in my mind. And then, however, a light, a tall, bright light now, appeared again and stopped. The dream stopped. Then in my heart of heart, I said, this is the light I saw when I was about eight, nine years old. I saw this and I told my auntie, my mother's sister, younger sister who is from Kuala Lumpur and she was the uh, deputy principal of MGS in KL and president of the MYF of the Methodist Church there, Wesley Church. So she's a Methodist. So when I shared it with her, she said, oh, that is Jesus calling you. Now, to me, no credibility. You're a Christian. I ask you, of course, you tell me it's Jesus calling me. If it were Buddhist, the Buddhist would say, that's Buddha calling you. So to a certain extent, serve me right. Go ahead. I talk to a Christian. Sure, Christian will tell you it's Christianity. But the interesting, she never followed up with me. And that was that. So the Lord gave me a dream when I was 36. Then, on the eve of my receiving Christ, I had a third dream. And this third dream was, I was in my grandfather's house at Upper Serangoon Road, where every Sunday, usually, uh, most Sundays, my grandfather would have mahjong tables and there's always party. And the kitchen is so huge, there'll be, I will, the, the, the cooks will be cooking and it's always festivity, you know, on a Sunday. But my grandfathers and friends and and you know, and food, and as children, uh, I was serve tea. And then when I serve tea, they play mahjong, they give you a tip, you know, 50 cents, 20 cents. You know what I mean? It's really it's motivation. And I, I, I enjoyed myself with all the aunties and the uncles. It was a lot of festivities. So we used to have, and so in that dream, there was a function in the big compound. That compound was two acres. Uh, and that's where I learned to open durians. Uh. I still, to this day, very good open durians without having, uh, all I need is a knife or, uh, 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 you know, and I can open durian even without cloth, okay? Because I've been opening durians since young because I love durians. So in the morning, you run to the, to, under the durian tree, you can go and pick up durians. They were very good durians from Serangoon, okay? But anyway, coming back to the dream. So in the dream, there was this party and the house caught fire. And then next to the house, there's a big longkang, a big longkang called Payolai, you know, a canal. So in the dream, it was a big, bigger than Jordan River, like, actually, you know, in, in history. So there was a pantoon there. I got everybody quickly, quickly, quickly get into the pantoon. I row you all to safety. So I got everybody onto the pantoon and I was rowing and as I was rowing, 
Oh my gosh, the demons that were that came. And that was when, again, I wanted to call out at that time to the goddess of mercy, so to speak. She appeared at the idol, the image appeared, but the light came again. And this time, I know, I know that I know it is Jesus Christ because I woke up singing a hymn that I've always sung in Fairfield School from Sunday School and Fairfield Chapel. So I knew in my heart, I said, Lord, you're calling me. That was when I, my friend Timothy Xiao, Connie Xiao, came to the Lord. He had, uh, you know, liver uh, cancer, but got healed by the Lord. And I saw him from dying to come back to life. And then he invited me to his house for, for a cell. And the Lord spoke in uh, John 15 through Pastor Yao Aosu Ocha from Ghana. He says, you know, I'm the vine dresser. You're on the vine, you know, and you are the branches. You don't bear fruit. I'll cut a tree with a fire. And I knew, I knew, Lord, you called me three times. Now, if I don't answer, the fear of the Lord gripped me so hard. Nah. I told Hock Chai and my husband, let's go back to church. I need to go back to church. That is how uh, the Lord in 1983 actually got me back to church. Okay? And that was when the Lord spoke, which I shared with you the last time, how the kind of glory fell on me, took away the, 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 you know, the chains that were broken, all the demonic, you know, uh, 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 bondages that I had because I was so involved in the occult now. Dreams are very important. Uh, God will lead, guide us to dreams, of course, his word, his promises through prophecies. And uh, I have been very blessed because I believe, you know, and in uh, 2 Corinthians 20, believe in the prophets so you will be blessed, okay? I think. Second Chronicles 2020, he says, believe in the prophets. And uh, and even uh, Second Chronicles 2020, okay? Believe in the prophets and you will be saved. You put your trust in the prophets and succeed, okay? So prophetic word, very important. And the most important thing is cooperate with the prophet of God. Don't expect to sit down don't believe and say, God, I hold my head. When is it going to happen? It doesn't happen. Agree with it and say, Lord, I want this. And as you read scriptures, any scriptures that coincide or agree with the prophecy that is given, hang on to it and proclaim it, confess it, declare it, okay? And wait for it to come to pass. And I want to thank God that it. when you do that, you know what you do? It builds the inner side. It builds the inner core of you, not the outside, the inner side. And in the meantime, what are you doing? Get rid of doubts. Do not entertain. The Lord told me, don't entertain doubts. Do not dwell in unbelief. Do not listen to anyone who gives you doubts, especially when you're not vaccinated. The Lord said, don't go and learn. Go and listen. Go and read up on anything that will give you doubts. Just continue to focus on me. Because the Lord gave me Isaiah 7, 9. Say, if you do not trust me to protect you, you will surely not last. Isaiah 7, 9. Look, I've never seen a phrase like that. And I told God, I will trust you. And trusting God, invisible, but according to his word, is faith. And the currency in the kingdom of God. And the... Uh, the, the, I want to quickly share with you this dream, which is very interesting. 1984, Lucy Kwok, who was, uh, who was uh, with Chung Kiao Bang, the PA of Dato Bichi San when I joined Chung Kiao Bang. Subsequently, after Chung Kiao Bang got taken over by UOB, uh, by UOB after Slater Walker stripped it from Hopa, she, I lost touch with her because I moved, I went to MAS, she went to Chung Kiao Bang, and then after that, she went to a stockbroking firm. And we lost touch until I became a Christian. I went to St. James Church. And I met her there. And I said, oh, Lucy, you're also a Christian. And uh, I, and that was when I said, Lucy, what are you doing? Would you like to join me in ABS? I'm looking for, you know, an assistant. So she came and joined me for 12 years. So Lucy came to join me. In the meantime, there was another lady from Jamaica called Dian Chai who married uh, the uh, Deputy Commissioner of Police's son. 
And uh, again, she was looking for a job. So I said, okay, you come and join me. So Deanne Chai and Lucy Kwok were my left and right hand helpers, uh, assistants in ABS in the early years when I was in ABS. Now, I had a dream in 1984. I received Christ in 83, 84. These were all the early days that actually set in motion a lot of my walk with the Lord that built up my inner core of Christ in me. Very interesting. And uh, in that dream, I was walking down Chinatown where Lim Chi Guan is, that street. Uh, I'm a Chinatown girl. I grew up in New Market Road. So that's my, my uh, childhood area where I walk. People's Park, I don't know. Only those in my generation will remember People's Park used to be by the roadside outside Majestic Theatre, okay? <laughs> outside where it is. It's not like this today. It was along the street at night. It was fantastic. It was a, a, a night market the whole night. So that was my hinterland, so to speak, my playground. So I was walking down Wu Jiao Ji in the passageway there, turning up, turn right to Cross Street, Upper Cross Street. Uh, where Spring Court Restaurant is, where now I think is a, a hotel there, 81 is, is. And as I turned the corner, there was a material, selling material, a shop that was selling material. Now, when a shop sells material, there's this tall mirror for you to take the cloth, put it on yourself to see whether it suits you or not. So when I turned the corner and I looked at myself in the mirror, I was totally naked, totally stuck naked, you know. So I looked to, G to, to Lucy, I said, Lucy, Diane, why did you tell me I'm naked? And I quickly ran into the shop, took a bale of cloth and wrapped myself with the cloth. And uh, after that, that was the end of the dream. So when I shared this, my husband said, who dare to tell you you're naked? You're so fierce. Everybody's scared of you. You're being like but the emperor in... The emperor in don't know what cloth. There's this, this story of the emperor in new clothes, you know. So my uh, hawk child just say, you're so fierce, who dare to tell you? But it's very interesting. You know? It is spiritual. Lucy couldn't see. The end didn't know what I'm talking about. But I realized the Lord actually gave me in Isaiah 60, he said, I will clothe you with the robe of salvation and the robe of righteousness. Garment of salvation and the robe of righteousness. And I was totally naked. Now, nakedness is shame. Okay? And that is why unknown to me, that is the condition of myself inside me. It's my spiritual condition, totally naked. And the Lord says, if you're naked, don't worry, come and buy from me. Okay? And the clothes that, the clothes that I, and if to a certain extent, I was never a pretty child. My sister was pretty. She was called Lin Tai. I was not pretty at all. But I realized that every time I wore a nice dress, I get complimented. As a result, I got addicted to wearing nice clothes. As a result, I wish I became vain. As a result, I became, you know, I realized that my outside trappings, you know, uh, the adornment, you know, and the putting on of jewelry and everything, I became vain uh, in that sense because I realized that when I tapan, uh, then I get compliments because I was not good looking. So I began to groom, quote unquote, groom myself physically on the outside. But the Lord is so pointed, you know. I don't, don't look at the beauty of the adornment outside with jewelry, braiding of hair. First Peter chapter 3, okay. But have a chaste, respectful behavior, quiet, gentle, that is precious in the sight of God. And that is where the Lord challenged me. And the Lord challenged me to grow my insight of me. Grow my insight. And I tell you, I, I know I'm so tempted to show you what I bought, okay? And I have. I, I, I wanted to take it earlier and I forgot, but let me go and get it, okay? Here, here, here. Here, here, here. I don't know how to show you. This is my poor Tao Ong. It cannot fall down, okay? Because there's an internal ballast at the bottom that this doll cannot fall down no matter what you do, okay? No matter what tribulation this doll goes through, this doll cannot fall down 
because belong is the balance. And this is the internal balance that you and I must have, the foundation of the rock of Jesus Christ, that we become a put our own. And the sword, Lord says, the righteous will fall many times, seven times. But the Lord says, you'll never be cast down because you have God in you. You are able to call on God. There's a spiritual maturity to call on God. Your mind is fixed on God. Your default is to call on God each and every time you face any trials, any tribulation. And you know, the wonderful thing is this. Um, with, with all these, uh, the Lord has been very uh, gracious. Uh. So when we fight this good fight of faith, um, throughout my 40 years, you know, I'm bad-tempered, I'm loud, I must express myself. Now, I think all of us must express our frustration, our irritation, our anger, our bitterness. We must express because I want to believe every one of us are not right, quote-unquote, in the Lord. That's why Jesus came to save us. However, whereas I, in my anger, my frustration, my agitation, I throw it and give it to people about me. After I came to Christ, I realized that I've got a cross, which is my rubbish bin. The best rubbish bin with Jesus Christ who's able to take all my nonsense. God who understands, who created me. So I give it all to the Lord. Now, this is how for the first 10 years at least, 20 years, okay, Whenever I'm angry with anything, I learn now to give it to the Lord. Now, for those of us who are not able to express, not like me, I'm very expressive. Huh? For those not expressive, please, you are no better than me. You will have anger, frustration, irritation, unforgiveness, bitterness. Guarantee all have. All have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. All. There's no exception. What you have to do too is to turn to God and give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Otherwise, one day you'll bow down. And, you know, even when I was a new Christian, uh, when I was angry, I told you when I was angry, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, how do I, uh, you know, be a, a submissive wife if I still don't agree with my husband? And the Lord says, obey my word. Yes, yes. If you obey my word, it doesn't matter what you think or say. So I realized that the word of God says you submit to your husband. Therefore, the word also says forgive. So the, 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 the word says you want to be perfect in God, you love your enemies. Uh, the word of God says, you know, you bless and you give. And when you give, you don't expect a return. Otherwise, don't give. Then you just give what you think can give and able not to take back. So these are things which in the Bible has taught me to walk in the will and the way and the word of God. Amen. And uh, I want to thank God too that when I was, this is something which I want to, to say, to express myself to the Lord. Nowadays, I still, I do less and less. But in my earlier years, when I'm very, very angry, I will take a shower I will wet the, the towel and I'll squeeze the water out of the towel in order to release, you know, whatever is the anger in me. Men, some I've heard play tennis and they hit the ball and release it. And everything, every time you hit the ball, they say, Lord, I give it to you. So that whatever you do in Colossians 3, 23, 24, you do it unto God, not unto men. You do it unto God, not unto men, knowing that he will give you the inheritance and in him, you will have your reward and in him is whom you serve. And uh, as a Christian now, it's no longer us who live us, but Christ who lives in us. And uh, the question is, of course, to many of us, why Christ? It's because throughout my walk with the Lord, he has never failed me. And second thing is throughout these last 40 years, one thing I learned is to love his discipline. To love his discipline, to love his reproof. So uh, in him, this is, and the Lord says, you know, uh, Isaiah 45. And Jesus too, you know, it was in suffering 
that Jesus learned obedience. It was in suffering that Jesus learned obedience. And it is when you face uh, trials and tribulations, Jesus says in John 6, 33, be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. In other words, when you face various trials and tribulations, you will, you will face. There's no one who will not face a difficult person, difficult situation, a situation where you contradict uh, not how you want it. The more important is, Lord, what is it in this that you want me to learn and have of you that I can't have of you in any other situation? Because the whole objective of our coming to Christ is to transform us into the image of Jesus Christ, is to transform us into Christ-likeness, you know, which is something I want. And Christ-likeness is the best one. And Christ-likeness is to be the bride of Christ, to look like Jesus Christ, and to therefore grow, grow from faith to faith as from glory to glory, and Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's the end game. So that when we meet with Jesus Christ, we are the bride of Christ, and the bride must reflect the image of Jesus Christ. That is the whole end game for us as Christians, okay? So, I learned um, by the grace of God, okay, um, to be rid, the cleaning of my inside comes from, of course, my husband and then the children and then my office staff especially and then now my daughter-in-law. And each time, I face a difficult situation and I cannot have my way. I cannot have my way. I must do it God's way. And so to be an honourable vessel, um, an honourable vessel for God's use, we got to reflect the image of God. You got to take away everything that is not of God, that we be like God, you know. And the fruit of the Spirit is the character of God. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, patience, faithfulness, self-control. And uh, for the last 30, until 2019, uh, from 1983 until 2019, until my daughter-in-law was diagnosed with this incurable disease, which Jesus Christ is going to cure, God is going to cure. Uh, God has been bringing me through seasons and seasons and seasons. And... Uh, Every new season in my life is to elevate me. And all problems that I face is to elevate me. Uh, and in every problem, I, I, when I went to the word of God, I met with a loving God, a faithful God. So that like in James chapter 1, 2 to 4, it says, count it all joy when you face various trials. And as I've said, I said, I love the discipline of God. So James chapter 1 says, count it all joy when you face various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce endurance, and that endurance has perfect result, that you'll be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. So I realized I need to have joy. And then Romans 5, 3 to 5 says, exalt in your tribulations. So again, you know, it's in, in my early years, I felt it was very contradictory. It's a mock oxymoron that I in I am in difficulty, I am in trials, I have difficult people, I have difficult circumstances, and an oxymoron to ask me to rejoice in my problem. But the wonderful thing is when Hebrews 12 says, while you are being disciplined, it's not pleasurable. But afterwards, after you have overcome, after you have persevered, after you have continued to look to the Lord, which I did in the fear of the Lord, I became a better person. Better in the sense that I took on more of Christ in me. I've got more Christ likeness in me. I'm more tolerant. I'm more, uh, 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 more, uh, more thankful. I am more grateful. I'm more gracious. I'm more patient. I'm more, uh, have more self control. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm much better than what I used to be. That's why now I can say I love myself. I can love others as I love myself. And this myself is not me. It's the new life of Christ in me. It's not me, me. It is Christ in me because I've put my own man to the cross. So, the 
the Isaiah for Isaiah forty five. It's this, of course. I want to thank God that this word of God is my love letter from God to me. And uh, it's so amazing that when I go to the word of God and when I find that I do not know what to do, the Lord actually has written this book for me. He actually wrote this book and I find myself <coughs> in this book as though it's written for me. So Isaiah 45, he said to me, you did not know me, but I knew you. Even before you knew me, I knew you. And I said, Lord, you knew me. He said, yes, I knew you even before you knew me. And uh, I called you by name. I called you by name. And he says that I will go before you and I'll give you treasures in darkness. The hidden wealth of secret places in order that you may know that it's I, the Lord, who calls you by your name. And he also says that you know, I am the Lord. There is no other. Isaiah 45, 7. And I cause well-being. I cause calamity. I'm the Lord who does all this. Then I realized that God, you are so sovereign a God. You are so sovereign a God. You know what you are doing. As I said at 36, I've given up on the world. I had a problem with a midnight crisis. You'll be so shocked if I were to tell you the advice that I got from the world, even from successful professionals who were, of course, now I realize they are not in Christ. How can they give me anything of the Lord but of the world, which is absolutely, sorry, not, totally nonsensical. And that's why I thought, quote, I could give up the world and I fully, wholeheartedly came to the word of God. And not only that, you know, I realized too, no one could accept me the way I was, except the Lord. That's the other thing uh, I thank God for his, his patience with me, his gentleness with me. And, in, and he says, I'll give you the secret, the treasures in secret places, the wealth of the wealth that are in hidden places, the secret, the treasures in darkness. So Brian Bailey was told that only in this side of eternity, this side on earth, you have darkness. But in the darkness, if you look for the light, if you look for Jesus Christ and Christ in us with the Holy Spirit, you will find treasures. And I kept on doing that. I obeyed the word of God. And as I obeyed the word of God, I was with... Uh, uh, Joyce, Dr. Joyce Sivaratnam with uh, uh, Augustine Tan's Hapziba Church. And I was there and I went, the, after the message, it touched me so much, I went before the altar and I knelt down to meet with the Lord at the altar. Now, after the service, I, whenever Dr. Joy comes, I always go with him for lunch because he was my teacher and, uh, and after that, he used to come to Singapore and live and, and, and stay with Gimhok and Sumian and invariably I also will buy breakfast there and and and, and get nuggets of uh, of uh, of uh, of the word of God from him. And he says at lunch, you know, we went to I still remember we went to that Swiss ah, I've forgotten what's the name that Swiss buffet place. Anyway, I was having lunch with him. He says no, I don't. A very interesting, when you were at the altar kneeling down, I saw a crown on your head. I've never seen such a vision before. And immediately the Lord says, James 1.12. And I, Lord, the crown of life. And this is, blessed is the man or the woman who perseveres under trial. Persevere under trial. For once she has been approved. She will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, this is very important that we get crowns on this side of eternity. They are all together, I think, 12 crowns or 10 crowns. You can see crown of life, crown of righteousness. If you, if you Google, okay, or if you go through the concordance, there are different crowns for different situations. Only on this side of eternity, you receive crowns by overcoming by looking to the Lord, by not giving up on God, by persevering, 
faith and patience. And when you have crown on this side of eternity, when you go over to heaven, when you meet with Jesus, then you can crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon the throne. Where you got the crowns? You get it here. Overcome. Every overcoming, there are seven, seven overcoming in the book, in Revelation chapter 2 to 3, okay? Overcome, overcome whatever difficulty you have. And let me tell you, God in Jesus Christ has already made us overcomers, made us more than conquerors, given us victory over every situation. If we fight the good fight of faith with a mind that goes against negativity, doubt, unbelief, fear, worry, but focus on the word of God that in me, you are more than conqueror. In me, I am the Lord, the El Shaddai. I'm the El Shaddai, you know, who will do exceedingly abundantly. I am your El Shaddai God. I am more than enough. What you imagine or think I can give you, but it's according to the power that worketh within you. You and I got the power of God, the inner self, the inner life of Christ in us. If we confess it, we declare, we proclaim it. Hallelujah. Don't let negative words come out of your mouth. Whatever comes out of your mouth must give life, not death. Choose life, the Lord says in Deuteronomy 32. Choose life. And this is where the Heart now is very important, okay? The Lord taught me have a tranquil heart. 14, 13, I won't, don't fret. Psalm 37 says, trust in the Lord. Look at Psalm uh, 37, you know. Love, you, you must love the discipline of God. I've learned that in my 40 years walk, all difficulty, all difficult circumstance, go to the word of God and overcome with the word of God. Don't find your own solution. And I want to thank God. That is how the Lord has taught me and brought me through. And I am so blessed today. I am really am. And the Lord says in Jeremiah 2.13, for every difficulty that we face, let us run back to the Lord, return Amen. to the Lord, because Amen. God has the best solution for us. For he permit all things to work together for good. And uh, we may not understand it, uh, but uh, later on, you'll find that, you know, God has the best for us. And I just pray in Jesus' name, even now, that Lord, you bless Albert and Grace. They, they have been hit so hard together with the son and the daughter-in-law. Uh, and so, Father, we uphold and uplift them by your grace and your mercy to sustain them with your love, your grace, and Lord, with your presence with them. So I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, really, amen. So it is in times of, um, it's in times where we face difficulty. So I know I know, I got distracted somewhere and uh, I, um, um, okay, so let me just say that um, Hebrews, 12, talk about the discipline. It's a famous discipline uh, verse of the Lord that says in discipline, he disciplined us for our goods in verse 10, uh, Hebrews 10, that we may share his holiness. I have never looked at all my difficulties, all my difficult people, all my difficult circumstances, all my situations uh, as anything but God's way of teaching me to reach out to him and to know him better and better and to grow him inside me. And that has been how he has done it. And the Holy Spirit has convicted me that, you know, um, in, in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse chapter 9 or 7, 2 Corinthians, this is where uh, chapter 7 or 9, and I recall uh, 2 Corinthians 7, he says, um, 2 Corinthians 7, yes. When you are sorrowful, in verse 9, 7, 9, say you are made sorrowful 
to the point of repentance. Repentance means return to God. Have a mindset change. Don't keep on dwelling on the negative. Go into the positive. How? Bring God into the picture to say, Lord, what is so good about this? For you say in your word, you permit all things to work together. What's so good about it? According to the will of God, in order that you do not suffer loss, you know. The sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance returning to God without regret leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. And this is where whenever anybody has a problem, say, where is God? God is in this. You may not understand, but God is in this. And, you know, I've learned from season to season. I'm now in a very di difficult season where I've got a huge mountain in my daughter-in-law called motor neuron disease, ALS, which the doctors say there's no cure. And physically, she's deteriorating. But in the name of Jesus, it seemed insurmountable. But I say, God, in the natural, it may seem insurmountable. But like Abraham in Romans 4, 17, 18, 19, 20. Abraham looked at his body dead at 100, looked at the wife, womb dead. But he never counted his circumstance, anything, because he hoped against hope. There is a natural hope, which may be not that good, but there is a supernatural hope in God, who is the El Shaddai, who will who is able, more than able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can ask, imagine, provided the power in us, in the Holy Spirit, according to the word, do not grow in unbelief, but grow in faith. Being assured, so how do we be assured in faith? That he who promised is able to deliver what he has promised. Amen. Amen. And that Amen. promise is, he has healed her. Sure. Now, sure. Jenny sure. asked me, my daughter-in-law asked me, he said, and that God counts it as righteousness now, and the righteous live by faith. And it's so wonderful. If you read the rest of Romans chapter 4, right to the end, he says, it was counted to Abraham no, as righteousness, it. not only to Abraham, but to those who behave like him, Go by faith, trusting the Lord. He counts that as righteousness as well. And this is a righteousness given to me by Jesus Christ, not by works, you know. And, you know, it's so amazing. The Lord told me, in walking with Jimmy, go and learn what this means. Matthew 9.13. I want compassion, not sacrifice. Frankly, now that she's invited me to live with her, I don't have a, my driver now is being used for the children. I drive myself everywhere I go. If I can, I don't have a helper that focusing on. No. I used to have one that just looks after me. Now it's like, cannot. You know, she needs all the three for the household. I have no say in this house. I have to give up control. This is not, although they live in my house, but it's not the house. It's the authority of my son I shared with you. That the authority is my son. I submit to my son's authority. As head of the house, I'm just, a, I may be a mother, I may be a mother-in-law, but I've never put a card. To me, is I am here, a child of God, a, a daughter of God. My identity is, I am Zerubbabel, which God gave me on the 17th of July. Uh, through Pastor Daniel Sim of Brisbane, who out of the blue kid, wrote to me and said, Auntie Ibun, uh, you know, I believe God wants me to give you this to encourage you. And he doesn't even know that the day before the doctor has diagnosed my daughter in law with motor neuron disease. And he says, Not by power, nor by Zechariah 4, 6, and 7. Not by power, nor by my, but by my spirit. Before Zerubbabel, this mountain will become a plain with a capstone. And shouts of grace, grace, grace. And then, then I said, Lord, you brought in Zerubbabel. Make me Zerubbabel. I want to be Zerubbabel. I want to assume the character, the nature of Zerubbabel. And let me tell you, God is so good. He's been bringing me books. He's been bringing me revelation of who Zerubbabel is. 
And Zerubbabel is one of the descendants of forefathers of Jesus Christ. Zerubbabel is a priest. Zerubbabel is a type of Jesus Christ. He faced enormous problems. He had enormous pressure in trying to rebuild the temple that was destroyed, you know, by the Babylonians. But he never gave up. And, you know, Zerubbabel is like Christ. So I said, look, I want to be like Christ which we are, you and I are like Christ. I say, Lord, I want to be like Christ. I have to be Christ in this household. And Jimmy and my son have been, quote, unquote, really, really born again three years ago, 2019. I'm a 40-year-old Christian. Hey, the Lord says, I will have compassion, man. Give grace, man. Then I understand. Everything that they do that is not right and not according to the word of God, I am not to be critical. I'm not to be judgmental. I'm not to be resentful. I'm not to be fretful. I am to give grace, grace, grace. I have to behave like Christ in this house, that the rivers of living waters must flow through me to them. And that's Jeremiah. And I want to believe. I want to believe. I want to believe. Hallelujah. As I offered myself as an honorable vessel to the Lord. Okay? So to me is hey, that are a lot of their mind and their thoughts that are held captive by Satan, so to speak, in a way because two of them are so worldly, two of them are so intelligent, two of them are so smart, two of them are so rational, two of them are so logical. Mommy, you have blind faith. You know, I can't take your brand of faith. To me, is my brand of faith is Christ in me, the hope of glory. But I can't take it. They really cannot take it because faith is not worldly logical. Faith is not worldly rational. Faith is not worldly clever. It is just foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of the world. So to mm. them, I am foolish. But hallelujah, I stand. Don't be resentful. Don't be upset, which I used to. And the Lord told me, I won't. Second, First Peter chapter 2.15. The Lord told me. First Peter. First Peter chapter 2.15, the Lord told me, for such is 2.15, such is the will of God that by doing right, you may silence the ignorance of the foolish people. So God is saying, I won't, don't justify, don't argue, don't explain, don't vindicate, even if what they say is not what you believe in my word, because it's like cheese and chalk at this moment. I am to give grace, 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 according to Zechariah 4, 7. Zerubbabel has shouts of grace. So I have to say, Lord, they are not obeying you, but it's grace, 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 everything that they are not right. Lord, grace. So I must have love of God. I must have compassion of God. I must have a cafe of God. Grace, grace, grace. Be my daughter in law. And you know, even Paul told Timothy, you know, you who desire to live godly, you'll be persecuted by even Christians who are not yet aligned to the word of God. I tell you, Christians will even persecute you. And I, I realized that, you know. And the Lord said, if they persecute you for your doing what is not wrong, if I favor with God, I say, okay, lah. as long as I favor God, more mantai, lah. Ah, yeah, God is on my side. Hallelujah, Lord, your favor more important. So I am learning the dying to self so that the inside of me, Christ in me can come up. That's why God says, clean out first your inside. And when your inside is clean, out of your mouth, because your heart is clean and pure, out of your mouth, you won't speak negative. Otherwise, initially, ayo, then yang very, very troublesome, I realize. And, uh, and God is the cutest God. I tell you, God is so cute. I say, God, of my three children, you have to put me to live with my some content. I've got three. <laughs> and I am so motivated that I love him and I realize uh, truly, you know, love covers a multitude of sins. Really sad. Uh. <laughs> I declare, Lord, I very sad this boy, okay? And because I sad this boy, I sag her the jai, sag her in a blow pot. So I'm just saying that I really love. And this love motivates me. So I realize, 
uh, and God is good. Lah. I mean, God will never tempt us beyond what we can bear. First Corinthians 10, 13. It's not that he tempt. He will not allow anything to happen to us beyond what we can bear. When he, we come back, he find a way out. So he knows what I'm going through. I, I know I'm going through a lot. But he sweetened it. You know? And he sweetened it and let the medicine go down. The medicine go down. You know, Mary Poppins, you know. You, it sweetened, he sweetened it by giving me my youngest boy that my Joseph, which had caused so much problems with the siblings and my older son, which I told the Lord, I said, oh, one day you really got to reconcile me with my older boy, who saw in me a total favoritism to this younger brother, vis-a-vis -vis him, you see. And of course, his wife also saw my favoritism to the younger boy, vis a -vis her husband. But anyway, this is another separate testimony altogether, okay? But, uh, you know, when we are facing, quote, unquote, what seems like an insurmountable mountain, but the promises of God, my, I, I say, Lord, I wanted to turn you all to uh, Proverbs. Quickly turn with me. What time is it now? It's going to be five o'clock. Proverbs. Can you turn with me? I want to turn you to Proverbs 2, where the Lord said, get wisdom. Now, I want to share with you this wisdom which God taught me, which I benefited so much from the word of God. Because as I say, I, I run my ABS like I run a church, okay, or I run it with the word of God, okay? Proverbs chapter 2, the Lord said, do not, do not ignore and do not run away from my reproof. Do not run away from my training. And this is something which when it's very painful, I'm prepared to say, but the path of, okay, this is uh, uh, chapter two. Uh, can you see? Chapter two, he says, uh, receive my sayings. He says, uh, oh, sorry, chapter one, Proverbs chapter one, not two. Turn to my reproof, 23. Turn to my reproof. I will pour my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. In other words, when you submit yourself to the Lord's discipline in a difficult situation, I will pour out, I will surely pour out. No, he promises you, no, I will give you my words. And this word comes with wisdom because in verse 20, which is all part of it, it wisdom shouts in the street, she lifts up her voice in the chair. So God said, come to me, I give you wisdom. Okay? And you refuse. I call you refuse. I stretch out my hand, you never pay attention. 25, you neglected my counsel, you didn't want my reproof. And then he says that don't hate knowledge, but choose the fear of God. Okay? This is all in Proverbs chapter 1. And he says wisdom. Now quickly turn to me. The wisdom of God in the Bible is in James chapter 3, verse 17. This is the wisdom which I desire and God gave. James chapter 3, 17 is the wisdom that is from above, is a person. Jesus is the wisdom of God, the righteousness of God, the sanctification of God, the justification of God in first Corinthians chapter. Uh, 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 you know, chapter one, he says, wisdom from above is a person in you, the fruit of pe be pure, peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy, good fruit, unwavering without hypocrisy. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And I've asked God in Romans 8, 18, let me be a peacemaker. Let me, if it is possible and it is possible and within my ability depends on me. Let me bring peace wherever I go. Where there is a problem, let me keep very quiet because Isaiah 30, 15 says in quietness and trust is my strength. So this wisdom that I want in my work, in my workplace, I realize uh, this wisdom with a pure heart that is peaceable, gentle, I'm willing to yield, full of, of, uh, uh, full of mercy and good fruit. And uh, with this wisdom, very interestingly, it's actually the character and nature of Jesus in me. And when you have that, you find that in my workplace, 
it attracts it attracts talents to come and help out where I cannot. And I, I want to say the Guan Si that Di Guan Yu talks about, the networking, the EQ, it comes out of this. And when I speak, when I talk, when I say I don't know, but I am full of gentleness or willing to you, full of mercy out there, you find that everyone is attracted and everyone will do for me beyond the call of duty. Because the nature of Christ in us. This is the nature of wisdom. Is the nature of Christ. Uh, let me quickly uh, show you, and then I think I'll close here. Can't finish talking. Uh. That's why Elder Jehu, when Pastor uh, asked me to speak in L RLM, uh, the church eight session, cannot stop talking. You just continue because the Bible is full of the word. Of God. <laughs> Look at First Corinthians uh, chapter one. You know what I'm talking about. Verse 30, by God's doing, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, by God's doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. So let it be written, let him boast, boast in the Lord. By the grace of God, really by the grace of God, I, I want to thank God that. I am what I am today only by the grace of God and through trials and trials. I'm facing a big mountain, but I am given the promise that I'll be elevated to another level if I persevere and don't give up. And even in Hebrews 6, uh, is it Hebrews 6? He says, by faith and patience, okay? Uh, hope. The faith is to believe that it will come to pass. The patience is to in faith, wait until it comes to pass. So faith is not just knowing and believing the word. It's to believe God will do it and hang on to it. And every time it gives you discouragement, run to the word of God. For faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. So throughout these last two years, that since my daughter-in-law, um, you know, was diagnosed with this. I told her, I said, I've grown so much in the Lord because of you. Because you drive me to go into the Lord. And I see God even better. I mean, I see a more gracious God. And the other day when she says, Mom, you know, I'm having this. All the other, nobody has this. And, uh, you know, will God heal? Because I've not known God to have healed motor neuron disease. So I said, I, I don't have an answer. But I only know God is sovereign. And God knows best. And Hafez saying that <laughs> the answer didn't seem very hollow. So that night I was praying, I said, Lord, she asked a very profound question and my answer is so hollow. I was praying and the Lord gave me an answer. So next day I said, Jinin, I will tell you, last night you asked, yesterday you asked me the question. Last night I was talking to God that this answer, like not enough, what is it? Then the Lord told me to tell you, Jinin, I am with you. I love you. I will never let go of you. I will see you through. Just hang on there. Depend on my love. I will not stop loving you. I will hold you by my hand. So I held Jeannie by hand and said, Jeannie, God loves you. She cried and she cried and she cried and the helpers were also crying. And it's so wonderful, you know. You know, uh, let me, I've got only a few more minutes. Um, uh, I want to say quickly, uh, last Tuesday was the balloting of Megan's position in MGS. Yeah. <laughs> and in the newspaper, there are 79, it's the most oversubscribed in demand school, 79 applications for available 20 seats. Okay, so one in four. Okay. So the praise be to God. Uh, uh, please, can you just put up uh, Jinning's testimony, please, uh, uh, Colin? So by the grace of God. Okay. So Tuesday. Okay. So my, my place in, uh, in Chancery Court was on block. So I have the money. I want to buy another apartment. Cannot buy an apartment everywhere on the buy sala sala sala. <laughs> so in the end, I put the money in Sing Finance. 
that paid the highest interest rate for me, okay? Don't go to any of the local banks because the local banks, they're too cash flush, but Sing Finance gave me 1.9% for two years. And then I prayed and prayed and prayed because Jinyin wanted to send the daughter to Henry Park School. And then I didn't want, I prayed for the Lord. And true enough, when they came back from Sydney, Jinyin said, we will put her in MGS. The minute they said that, then we better buy the apartment, you know. So we were looking around and this is the testimony. Praise God, despite MGS being the most oversubscribed school in Singapore, Megan secured one out of 20 places. 79 parents were vying for the place, but of course, it's not, it's not so, you know, not so uh, simplistic as Megan got a place. So thank God. So this testimony for her, this testimony go back to a dream I had when I was 12 years old. It was so vivid, I still remember it. It was after my PSLE, I was waiting for my results. I was biting my nails about which secondary school I was going to go into. One night, I had a dream. A girl in an MGS uniform. Now, this totally freaked me out because my parents had already written my life story the moment I was born. I am to go to RGS uh, and then RJC, then do triple science and then become a doctor. That is the mother and the father's demand, okay? If that were me in MGS uniform, I would be in trouble. She actually not in trouble. She'd be minced meat, okay? Last year, when we were talking about how to get Megan into MGS, the Lord reminded me of this dream and told me it wasn't me in the dream. It was Megan. So she had a confirmation from God that Megan will go to MGS. Now, here's the problem. We need a place nearer MGS to be able to get in. Here's where the Lord provided once again. I was picking up a rocking chair. By the way, she always go to Carousel to buy... Uh, uh, buy toys for the children and then after that we will clean it up again and then resell and sometimes she can even make five dollars or ten dollars out of it okay? <laughs> this is a new generation after i picked up the horse i look around and thought what a nice place this was less than one kilometer from mgs Amor. the next day me i met up with a long lost friend whose daughter three daughters are in mgs he told her go and buy floridian so i called her at the lunch Jinning, let's buy Floridian. And she said, Mom, I was there yesterday and I wanted to tell you, let's buy Floridian. Confirmation. Now, this is not the first time. Uh, me and Jinning are in sync. Uh, many <laughs> times, okay? So within a week, she went to view units. I went to view. And then she found this unit, Tower 3, the ground level, unit 12, number 12. So transacted. So we bought this before COVID and moved into this patio unit we call home. So last week, the news announced that MGS was the most oversubscribed school in phase two. Honestly, it set me, it set me in a panic, but to me, it bothered, but I keep on claiming that, Lord, you answered my prayer. Lord, you let me buy this house. So therefore, Lord, Megan will be in MGS. So she kept on going back to the dream. So two of us in agreement. God told me that was Megan. He declared Megan to get into MGS. And she did. So Jinin says here, I've grown a lot spiritually in these three years since my diagnosis. But this episode marked a new growth. I felt God was telling me to hang on tight to the dreams he's given me over the years of me standing, speaking, seeing patients and operating again. She's an ENT specialist, see? The dreams are not just random piecemeal fragments of hidden consciousness, but visions God wants us to see, believe, persevere, knowing that he's a faithful and good God. Okay, the, his, her prayer is the last line. Can you scroll up, uh, please, uh, Colin? Her last line. So this is a prayer. Can we agree? Colin, can you scroll this testimony up? There's another last line. I've grown a lot. So last line. Scroll some more. Mm. One more. You don't have the last line. The last line is... The last line is the uh, line be soon. She pray. Yeah. You, can you read it out? Because I want all of us to agree with the prayer. Yeah. Lord, you... let my dreams come to pass. Let it be soon. Sustain me till then. Amen. Amen. Let's agree Amen. that, that mm. yeah, the Lord will sustain her. And I want to believe that she's having a lot of symptoms, but she's healed. And all I need, frankly is for her internal, according to first, uh, 3 John 3, that she'll be in health, 
prosper even as her soul prosper and be good health. So her soul, her spirit, uh, her spirit, it is already the righteousness of God given to her by God. It's already healed. But her soul, her mind, her will, her emotion must be so renewed with uh, and no more thinking negative, thinking like a doctor. I told her in the name of Jesus, I break this doctor uh, consciousness in you that when that it deteriorates, but rather that in Christ, uh, don't think negative, but in Christ, hallelujah, according to the power that within you, praise God, you know, you will be healed because by his stripes, you're already healed. Amen, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Amen. I am going through this with her and to me, it's such a blessing and uh, it gives me a lot of joy to walk with the Lord this way. Lah. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Okay, amen. Praise God. So I, I pray that I'll have a beautiful closing to this beautiful testimony in God's time. Amen. 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 Thank you very amen. much, uh, Elder Ivone. And let's continue in this um, frame of uh, prayer. Father, we just want to lift up Elder Ibun to you that let the testimony of Jesus Christ be the prophecy. Fear of prophecies and let her desire of her heart be answered. And all of us agree that Jin Ying will recover totally. Amen. And we pray Amen. according to 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in Good. health just as your soul prosper. Amen. So we speak that into being. We speak Amen. healing into Jin Ying. Her soul, body, prosper, soul and spirit. And Lord, that she will see herself standing. Uh, 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 touching her patient and also operating uh, the patient and uh, many people will come to know you. Amen. Bless you, Abba. We give you Amen. all the praises. In Yeshua's name and everyone says, Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you very much, uh, Elder uh, Ibon. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe by pressing this button below. You'll be the first to be informed of any posting that I make. Shalom. Goodbye.